Today's episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the gym aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where gym aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some fantastic practitioners that are always searching for more. But more what? What are strength and conditioning coaches searching for to better their ability to prepare their athletes? Well, what about cutting edge information or a place where you can find different opinions from forward thinking coaches on what you're doing, how you're doing, and try to get feedback to be better for your athletes? Or what about a place where you'll find like-minded coaches that can provide solid coaching advice and career development for you as you progress through your career as a strength and conditioning professional? Well, this is exactly why we built the Strength Coach Network. You'll have access to exclusive monthly content on top of the sensationally active forum that we have where you can communicate with coaches all over the world to find those answers that you're looking for to help you be a better practitioner for your athletes. So make sure you hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 47th episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper into the minds of the top practitioners in the world of sport performance learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the Houston Astros Strength and Conditioning Rehab Coordinator, Terrence Kennel. Terrence, thanks for being with us today, bud. Oh, thanks for having me, Jay. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. Fired up, catch up. Always great to, to see you, man. Glad you're doing well down there in, uh, yeah. in sunny Florida. But before we That's get right. rocking around, Try not to melt in this humidity, dude. <laughs> Yo, man. Yeah. It, every place in the south on the east coast is, like, stinky right now. Ugh. Yeah, man. Before we get rolling too far, brother, who was Terrence Kennel? Um, lower question, I think. Uh, transitioning coach, um, love, lover of, like, tra- like traveling, fire like read too many books at one time, uh, military kid. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it. Av- I, a- avid, like, I love, I love skateboarding. Like, that's why it's one of my biggest things, too. Uh, wear really colorful, bright shirts. <laughs> that's probably, I'll say that's probably one of my biggest, they all my biggest things about me. If I do like an about me, it'd be like those, those things. Yeah, man. I think uh, a lover of life, and then oddly enough, the colorful shirts are probably things that are really the young Terrence trademarks. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I want definitely about like a peacocky shirt, like tie a tie dye shirt, Hawaiian shirt, a random black color. I have a pink t shirt on now, like. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully the whole Hawaiian shirt thing can end out staying in the in the positive realm right because yeah it's just i've i've, I've stashed i've stashed him away from that we'll, we'll see we'll see what like the end of the year looks like i may have i may have to get rid of them all apparently yeah which is which is kind of wild to me man but listen dude you are a guy like one of, one of my favorite things about you is like you're you're a person that digs man you're a person that's not afraid to 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 look under rocks and to actually find the rocks, whether they be in England or in Japan mm-hmm. or wherever to, to learn. So this, this one I'm, I'm fired up about. I, I'm really excited to hear about a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. Mm, I would say the biggest learning situation was 
So I was in Japan. I've been there for probably two weeks. Um, the team went away for an away game, uh, pre- away preseason game. And so I mean, it's translators going to KRS and Lagron. We, me and the other intern were left with seven, eight players who are not selected to like rehab. They're all doing a speed session. Now I was supposed to lead the speed session. I had one player from um, Tonga who spoke Tonga in English and Japanese, but couldn't really translate that well. Another other player was full Japanese. Uh, one player was Korean. And he knew Korean, Japanese, and English. But, like, obviously, the English is very, going to be very limited across the board. I think the fears of him I learned and then was just like fully accepting that just say what he said and then shut up and let him figure it out. Just kind of get, like, get out of the way. And that was probably the big one. Like, uh, Kira called it like, word, econom- word economics. Like, don't say everything, don't say every cue in the world. Like, sometimes just shut the hell up <laughs> and let them figure it out. Yeah, man, I, I think that that whole idea of being able to, to teach without speaking when you're in those situations is really priceless. That's probably one of the biggest things I took from the time I was over in China. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would just be like, okay, if we're, if we're thinking about switching and just saying like fast switch and then shut up. I don't need to say fast switch, uh, ankle dorsiflexion, toe up. Up, knee up, like you can't say it too much. And now they didn't have to process everything you've said, and because this is a second or third language, they're processing it to take a bit longer <laughs> naturally. So imagine even when you're speaking to like people with English as the first language, like they don't, they're not the SEC coach. So you saying all those things is just words to them as an athlete. Oh yeah, and I think that there is a lot to be said for you know what I mean. In what we do, people love, I think next to like being shown new cool exercises, I think the next thing that people love the most is like, how do you cue that? What's your cue for that? Well, maybe the best cue is just to be like, yo, go do it and figure it out. And then, you know, go from there. Yeah. 100%. Everything needs to be a cue. Like, here's somebody's like corny, like saying it's like always be coaching or like don't get out coached or whatever. It's like, Man, they're, they're, just say what needs to be said. Then, like, get out of the way. Like, you don't have to be yelling and screaming at them every little thing. Chest up, back tight, toes forward, knees out. It's like, man, it's like they're just going to fig- figure it out. And they don't figure it out, you make a slight adjustment and eventually figure it out. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And then if you're sitting there every rep, you're giving them two or three or whatever cues, eventually they're just going to tune you out anyway. The words become they they lose they lose so much meaning and impact. It's like the same thing when you meet, you know, when we see you like coach you like always yelling, or yelling constantly. It's just like you're like that. You've lost. You, you've given that. You've given that tool away. That has no longer no longer has value because like you've inflated the usage. You're always yelling. Or even someone who like they they cuss the athlete all the time. It's like yeah. It's like if it's, if it's always an anger. It's like yeah. You've like, you've lost that. Doesn't hold any value anymore. Now, for me, like, I know that I'm not a naturally, like, loud person. And so when I do, if I do have to yell, or the, and, like, guys, no, guys tune into it. They're like, oh, shit, there's yelling, so it must be serious. Like, oh, we got to lock in. <laughs> if I say, like, hey, like, what the fuck are you doing? They know, like, oh, he's, oh, he's actually, like, he's upset right now. <laughs> so, like, we need to pay attention to what we're doing because we're obviously messing up somewhere. So I think oh, yeah. understand that balance and not, not, not sh- don't show your whole hand. Like, like on the first day. Facts, man. That's a great saying. Don't show your hand on the first day. I dig that. I dig that. Well, listen, Terrence, like you have. Like, I mean, you've been going all over the world to improve your craft and get going better. So it, this is going to be a good one too, man. If you had one question and you know that you would get the answer to it, what would that question be and why? Ooh. Hmm. First major question would be like, at what point does, at what, at what point does S and C stop mattering in a, in a, in a play in the basis of elite sport? So what point was like, do you realize that? Oh, okay. Like, like is is there a threshold? Almost like, is there a threshold of when sport no longer matters? And I mean, I mean, S and C no longer matters, and it's about just being more efficient and being more skillful. 
that probably is more like one question, I think. Yeah, and I think that's fair because I think that more and more, like what we, you know, at least conversations we have is it's kind of like what's what's important, what matters, and how much is enough. Yeah. Like almost like what I've realized in a bit is that I try to be more taking away of stuff and adding stuff. I'm just like, let's do as little as possible and progress as far as you can with as little as possible at first. And then like slowly add stuff onto it. Like, so I know some of that, like, like, like Bonnie Chubb talked about kind of some stuff like that of like using exercise until it stops working and then add in something else. Like you don't have to just, you don't have to don't keep throwing darts at a board and just using exercises for the sake of your own self using different exercises. It's like maybe you can do less, you can do more with less than do less. No doubt, man. No doubt. And I think that that's actually starting to finally become more common vernacular with people that do what we do is it's like, why do we need to do 50 sets of 50 exercises when we can get everything we need out of one or two sets of one or two exercises? I think almost like almost like COVID is almost going to force that in a way. Because like if you try to do too much, you will break people <laughs> like from the get-go. Yeah, unfortunately, I think that that may end up being a positive byproduct of the situation, right, is that people are going to yeah. have to slow down and be like, wait a minute. Like, I mean, really, the NCAA is not giving most of us a choice if you're actually following what their guidelines are, mm-hmm. you know, the 50, 70, 80, 90%. Yeah. Um, but even with that, I wonder, like, not that it, I mean it completely like this, but I wonder if that's like too fast. Like if you go straight all the way up, like, how do you know if 50% might've been enough if you only just did it for a week? Yeah, true. You know, like what yeah. if you could have kept going at 50% and there were things you're measuring that kept improving, like. Yeah. How wild would that be? You know? Yeah, it's like, oh, so, so we just keep using 50% until it stops working. <laughs> then, then we'll jump to 70. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for real, though. Like, I think that that's just something that we still aren't, we, we aren't quite ready for yet. Like, mm. there's some people who have been preaching that for a while. There's some people who really have been trying to work at that for a while but I don't know if just because of so much of the outwork them all you know like you brought up yeah is really just yeah. ingrained in what we do yeah like the like the grind kind of culture kind of grind mentality it's not just on the like man this isn't but as far as jobs go this isn't that hard <laughs> it's not, like there's much harder things that 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 occur people have much Worst jobs in life. <laughs> oh yeah, it's physically way worse. Like things that are yeah. much more challenging than such. Yeah. But listen, my man, let me get you out of here on this. Like, uh, you brought. I think you already brought up the answer. But you know, as a guy working in Major League Baseball, you know, someone who's been around the world, really working to formulate and perfect his craft. There, there's got to be times. When young Terrence brings it back to zero. So what's your escape, my man? Oh, I see. My three big my three biggest escapes. I would go with skateboarding for sure. So I love it's like right around a skateboard, around a lawn board. Um just cruising around like anywhere I really enjoy. Uh travel is another one. Like I like I have a huge passion, like other passion for like traveling. Um and then just sitting like sitting outside was like glass, glass of rum and coke, it's relaxing, not worrying about anything. That's been my three biggest ones for sure. I love it, my man. I love it. Hopefully soon, brother, we can uh, sit outside and enjoy a little time with with nothing else going on. Yeah. Hopefully, this COVID thing finally decides I've had enough. You guys can go have fun again. <laughs> uh, but until then, man, stay safe. Take care down there. And it's always great to catch up, my man. Appreciate your time. Yeah, appreciate you, dude. Cheers. Yeah, man. Cheers.